previous video, we quickly went over some typical workflows in 3D Coat. However, in order to clarify things even further, we want to utilize some visual aids that will identify the core feature sets of the application so that new and prospective users alike have an idea of what 3D Coat can do for them and uh, also to have a better understanding of the pipeline or the steps involved in performing a given task. So let's go ahead and refer to the chart here. You have four primary feature sets in the application. Texture painting, UV layout, retopology, sculpting slash modeling. As you can see in the chart here you have different options for each primary task. For example, you have UV-based texture map painting, vertex painting on a voxel object, then you have a full array of UV editing tools as well as PTEX technology. Then you have retopology tools with an extensive set of manual retopology tools and a very intelligent auto retopology routine, which will give you the ability to choose between full automation or somewhere in between. Uh, using stroke guides to direct edge flow on a given model. Right. Then you have sculpting and modeling tools. Now you can use the voxel sculpting tool set. It has a number of different modeling capabilities, but you could also use the retopology tool set for modeling if you so choose. You don't necessarily have to snap the geometry to an underlying model. You could actually construct or build objects in the retopology room all by itself. So it really is just a matter of giving users a number of different options. For example, you actually have three platforms for sculpting. You have image-based sculpting in the paint workspace. You also happen to have low-level, low-poly sculpting capability in the tweak room, which used to be called the sculpt room. And uh, so yeah, it allows you to just perform basic edits such as uh, transform operations. You can select an object and choose to move it, rotate, scale it, and so on. You also have the ability, uh, let me clear the selection here, to use soft selection okay, and perform transforms on it as well. And we will cover this in greater detail in a separate video. So you could use this if you have a model you just want to paint on and do some mild sculpting edits. You could opt to simply import the model into the paint room and again do just a little bit of editing to the low polygon geometry itself and then tackle the high frequency sculpting detail using image maps either micro vertex with displacement maps or normal maps in per pixel painting mode. And as you paint in the 2D editor, you'll see it update in the 3D viewport and vice versa. For example, you create a blank layer here. I'm going to enable depth and color. I'll choose a stamp draw mode in a craggy brush alpha here. And you can see as I click and drag, I can rotate and with this actually protruding, this is not what I want, so I can hold the control key to invert that action, and you can see how it works. Okay, and I have fall off, where I have a nice soft edge around uh, that particular uh, brush stroke, so that I can go in and blend that with other strokes as well. Okay, so you have a fairly extensive array of tools to use in the paint room by itself just for sculpting if you want and you also have the ability to stack layers of depth like this on top of one another one does not cancel the other out it works beautifully uh, for example I could create another layer and let's try some kind of reptilian scales Let's say that's a little bit too strong. I could always dial that back down. Okay, and I can also create a layer mask and mask out uh, portions of that texture and so on. So when this is exported, 3D Cut will bake it all down into one normal map. Okay. 
So I hope it gives you a decent idea of the capabilities in 3D Coat. We will go into further detail in the next two videos doing a walkthrough through a typical workflow where you take a model that you've constructed outside of 3D Coat and you bring it in to do some uh, high detail sculpting in the voxel workspace and apply a retopologized mesh to it. In this case, if you have a low polygon mesh that you're bringing in, you can always reuse that. And so we'll show that in that video. We'll then move on in a separate video, texture painting and UV layout. And we're just going to do a brief walkthrough. This is not intended to be a comprehensive uh, tutorial. So stay tuned. And like I said, we will pick it up in the next video covering sculpting and modeling. Thank you.